Hello everyone, this is the Highlander for the Highlander Wrestling Show. I hope y'all like my new setup here. Oh, got a desktop computer now with a camera and everything. So, anyway, uh, I'm here on this one to talk about Japanese women wrestlers. Um, of course, we all know the, uh, the Kabuki Warriors, uh, Asuka and... Kairi Singh and um, a lot of those, you know, those two are real famous in the WWE. Um, but now I want to talk about some others that some of y'all out there may not remember. Once I said y'all might remember if y'all around my age and older. Back in the uh, 80s, like say 1987, you had a tag team Japanese women wrestlers. Oh, uh, they was called the Jumping Bomb Angels. I'm not gonna try to say their individual name because I don't want to sound insulting. Uh, they used to uh, one of the things they or excuse me, one of their matches they had. They were in the ring with two tag team women's champions. So WWE did not have the very first like Oscar and Bailey were not the first women tag team champions in WWE. You had. Uh, the Glamour Girls, who was Lalani Kai, who was at WrestleMania 1 against uh, Wendy Richter for the women's title. And you had uh, Judy Morton, who was also a women wrestling legend. They were managed by the one and only Mount the South, Jimmy Hart. <clears throat> and But uh, the Jumping Bomb Angels were a very good women's tag team champion. They were quick. They could full of surprises, you know. I mean, they could jump off the top rope. They was doing some things that they wasn't really doing in the WWF at the time, especially the women wrestlers. But uh, one of the jumping bomb angels was a. Uh, so she debuted in 1981 around Jane. Excuse me, July the 12th of 1981, and. Uh, she was born in December the 1st, 1965, so, well, we don't go that far on the age, but uh, they were real big in the WWF. They was also WWWA Women's Tag Team titles, I mean, excuse me, champions. They were all Pacific Championships in all Japan. Where she one of the one I'm one of the girls that was in the jumping bomb out beat Bull Nakano, and you know they was just a, 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 a charismatic team. I mean they were just cool to watch. You ever go on WWE Network and stuff like that? Look them up, the Jumping Bomb Angels. You'll see that match where they go up against. So uh, there was was a, a, several other women. There was Fabulous Mula had the one side of the team and. Uh, uh, Sensational Sherry had the other side of the team. The other of the Jumping Bomb Angels, like I said, I'm not going to try to say their name. Um, she was born January the 3rd of 1966. And she debuted in 1981. Um, she was, uh, her and the other tag team partner they beat were Bull Nakano was in the, uh, had a tag team, and I, let's see, what was their names? Excuse me, folks, somehow, I got, I got notes. So I wouldn't forget nothing. Her, so it was Bull Nakano and Kadori oh, uh, Sato, I think is how you say her name, to win that, the, 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 the WWWA Tag World's Tag Team Women's Champion. So that's why I like to write down notes so I wouldn't forget everything. But the World Wrestling Federation, the mid in 1987, is where they really made a big name for themselves over here because they became an instant fan uh, fan favorite. Uh, but anyway, that's a good brief on them and the World Wrestling Federation. Uh, there was another Japanese ladies wrestler. She also showed up. In the World Wrestling Federation, I want to say it was her, uh, and well, I'll, I'll get them here in, a, here in a minute, the other ones that was in there, one of the other ones in there, 
but it had uh, the Launder Broke Blaze was in it. But anyway, she had a, a wrestling card in Japan. It was the FMW's trading cards. That's oh, um, Megami Kudo was her name. It is it's her name. But that's another good picture of her. And that's the back of it. So yeah, she she was a really cool wrestler to watch. She did hardcore wrestling. She would hit the bob wires and uh, fluorescent lights, uh, thumbtacks. She uh, she debuted or she debuted in nineteen eighty six in August the eighth of nineteen eighty six. But now she retired in on April the 29th, nineteen ninety seven. Oh, uh, she was a multiple time champion. She was, she was, uh, she joined the all Japan women's pro wrestling at the age of 16 years old, which was pretty impressive considering, you know, back in the eighties, women wrestlers in Japan were, were really big thing, but a 16 year, 16 year old girl being a pro wrestler was, you know, pretty, un uh, not, I'm pretty sure not very common. She uh, she went all over the once well, she was a, a, a worldwide success. I mean, she didn't really make her name really big over here, but like in the oh, like the, the South Pacific areas and stuff like that is where she was mostly really big big name for herself. Now she was born September the twentieth, nineteen sixty nine. And she's she was a uh, FW FMW Independent World Women's Champion four times, which was pretty impressive. FW, I might keep saying FW, FMW Independent Women's World World Women's Championship Tournament winner in 1994. Which was a big, hard, you know, ordeal to go through because that was a grueling uh, tournament. It was kind of like the Kelosaki Death Match. And uh, anyway, let's go to the next lady. Now she made a big name for herself in the World Wrestling Federation by beating Alondra Blaze for that uh, Women's World Champion in WWF. Bo Nakano. Bo Nakano was. <laughs> Very unusual woman's wrestler for Japan. You know, she had a little bit of the... Well, when she came into the World Wrestling Federation, she had Luna Vashon come out with her. You know, she had the blonde hair and it sticks straight up. And she had a long part in the back, you know. And she had a little bit of, you know, wild-looking makeup on. She was a very intimidating woman. And, uh... Let's see. She first appeared... And the World Wrestling Federation, let's see, let me make sure I'm reading my notes right here. She first arrived in the World Wrestling Federation alongside uh, Demp Mastasio. Anyway, excuse me for trying to pronounce. I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, in 1986, prior were were known as the Devils in Japan, in Japan, of Japan, the Devils of Japan, and competed in two tag team matches in 1986, defeating Velvet Mac Mac McLaren on both occasions. McLaren teamed with Don Marie, not the Don Marie in ECW, but the the, the very first Don Marie for World Wrestling or for the Pro Wrestling. And she also, her, it was, excuse me, it was Don Marie Johnston in the first match and Linda Gonzalez in the second. So Bull O'Connor has been in the ring with both of those legends. And there's another woman that was in, that was in that tournament I was telling you about were... It was had Bull, oh, not Bull Nakano, but 
uh, Alondra Blaze and all them. Her name was a a Aja Kong. I Aja Kong. I was gonna say how I'm gonna put it. It's A J A Kong. Made her WWE debut in 1995. Survivor Series pay per view is where that tournament took place. Where she was at it, which was a very good uh, little brawl they had. They had they had two teams, and that was a very uh. You know, you can go on, like I said, WWE Network and look it up to find it. It's 1995 Survivor Series. So if anybody out there wants to see it, you know, you can look it up. So that's why I went ahead and told you where to find it. Very interesting. And uh, we got another lady that was in that same tournament. Her name was Lawson uh, Osku. This, this thing is how you say it. Now, I don't know if you actually call it Osku or Osku. Uh, appeared in the day of during the 1980s as a part of a tag team called the Crush Gals, along with Chance Jackson Nagaro, Nagaro. Yeah, it's Nagaro. Yeah, Nagaro. Excuse me for that. Might sound a little bit bad out there, but I was trying to pronounce this. So please forgive me out there. And uh, she was a. Uh, she had the face paint, you know, of course, that's what we used to be cool about the 80s and early 90s uh, wrestlers. They used to wear the cool face paint. And, uh, let's see here, try to get my notes up and run. I can keep up. But, uh, this woman here, she was more what you call a, uh, like a manager. Her name was Akuri Akuri, I think it's just, I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce it. Now she was a very you know, of course, you know, she looked she had the whole original Japanese traditional geisha girl look, you know. And um it was she didn't really make it too big because she didn't really do a lot of the I don't think she did. I, what, I, what I remember about it, she didn't do a lot of pro, you know, getting the ring and everything. She was more what you call the manager. And, uh, but yeah, uh, I hope everybody out there enjoyed my video. I know it was not very much to talk about, but, but you know, I, I'll, probably, I'll do some more, so don't worry out there. And uh, anyway, y'all keep up with uh, my new videos coming up. Keep an eye out for Ultimo Gallo's videos. They're always interesting. Make sure you visit your local wrestling promotions, SWA and Louisiana Wrestling, uh, Alabama's D, uh, Diamond Championship Wrestling, and uh, around Pascagoula, Mississippi, you know, areas and stuff. So it's always fun to watch. You can go there, take your kids, your family, good, clean, fun. Battle Zone Championship Wrestling is probably going to be coming up pretty soon. Uh, if anybody out there is going to the uh, BLW wrestling event in uh, Brookhaven, I'm going to be there, along with Ultimo Gallows and all the other good pro wrestlers they're going to have out there. Can't wait to go see it. Hope, every, Like I said, I hope everybody enjoyed it. If you got any questions, leave me a comment, and uh, keep an eye out for my new videos. Thank you all very, very much. <laughs>